Okay, uh, so we mentioned the, uh, the BI tools. So uh, QuickSight is one of the BI tools that are now available. So actually, um, this semester, we will learn two business intelligence tools. So one is QuickSight. Another one is uh, Chart. Okay, it's called Chart. That is from MongoDB. Okay, a MongoDB chart. So that is to handle the um, the data that in MongoDB database. Um, QuickSight can be used to analyze data from uh, a lot of data sources that on AWS. Okay, so like data link, uh, data warehouse, and also uh, relational databases or non-relational database. Uh, next semester, so in the data visualization class, uh, we are going to introduce another uh, probably the most uh, famous uh, BI tools that is Tableau. Okay, so Tableau provide uh, the desktop version and also provide the broad uh, broad version, so cloud version and also the uh, standalone version. Okay, uh, so this week we are just use uh, see that how the Quick, uh, quick site look like so it is cloud powered BI service so that everything we need is just a browser and also a quick site account at uh, scale to hundreds of users so um, because it's cloud based and also they claim it is secure for sharing and also for collaboration uh, it is highly interactive a visual dashboard so we will see that one later so um, it can be integrated with most AWS uh, services and also data resources. One thing that I want to highly uh, emphasize is called Spicy Spice. So Spice is a data engine, so that the super fast parallel in-memory calculation engine. So when you have your data, either from your database or from your uh, data warehouse, you can analyze with QuickSight directly, or you can load that one to the to this uh, spicy, and next you can analyze to QuickSight. So in that way, it will be faster. Okay, it it will be faster, and also that will also be more expensive. It has a lot of uh, great um, functions on QuickSight. For example, it has autograph. So when you drag the data into the quick site and it will detect the data type and also create the appropriate type of the data visualization for you. It also has some AI enabled functions and we will see that one later. So like making forecast or, det or det uh, detect anomalies, etc. So we will see that one later on uh, during the lecture and also lab. So generally, so quick site is a you know the way that you can integrate all the data resources so for example you can bring data from your post jerry circle or from your cloud database from your data warehouse or from your data link where you can uh, doing a sort of a lot of visual analytics some of those analytics are ai powered okay so that's very useful and also you can get the the insight of the data uh, super fast. So you can see that is another way that to analyze data so we no longer using SQL but instead we can use those BI analytic tools to, to visually analyze our data. So there are two approaches. You can use SQL or you can use those BI tools. BI tools is, mo is also very expensive. So for QuickSight as I said, the price is $24 per user per month. Okay, so it's a relatively expensive service. Okay, uh, so here let's let's do a demo on QuickSight uh, very quick. Uh, so the QuickSight account is separate from your AWS Educate account because uh, QuickSight is pretty expensive, so AWS Educate Educate does not cover the cost of the QuickSight. Um, so we are going to log into QuickSight. So QuickSight URL is like this, quicksight.aws.amazon.com. And next, 
you need to provide the quick set account name. So the account name of this class is IA340. Okay, and you all have received invitation to your GMU email. So you just type your email and also password that you set. Just remember that the account name is i340. So I used my Gmail and I'm going to type my password. Okay, uh, so now I just logged into QuickSight and here you can see what's new. Um, you can close that one. Uh, so you on the left side you have you can see your favorite projects your recent projects and also you can also organize your projects with folders and you can share your folders with others and dashboard analysis and also data set so uh, once we log into QuickSight for the first time we need to set up the data set okay uh, so let's go to data set and here you can see you can upload the data uh, from the CSV file or from the CO files or from S3, a center, or you can just upload, uh, connect your data to S3 Barkit, RDS, Redshift, so that is a, a data warehouse, S3, that is a data lake, RDS is a data uh, relational database. Or you can connect to other data resources like SQL, MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, so if you have other resources. So here, let's connect to the PostgreSQL. I mean, our, data, our database is um, hosted on RDS, but I didn't give you access to RDS, so we can just treat that one as a PostgreSQL. Uh, we need to give it a database name, so let's say called i340. And a server, so the server is the database host URL, so which is on our lab one instruction on canvas. So I'm going to post, paste it here. And uh, the port, and the default, we're using the default uh, port number, which is 5432. And the database name is PostGRES. Okay, so that also is the default database name. Uh, username. So here you can use your own username. So I'm using demo, and you can use GP1, GP2, etc. And the password is a password that provided on, cam on Canvas of your group. And let's say validate the connection. That's great. Okay, and now we can create this data source. Uh, so here you need to select uh, the data. So let's select go to the demo. So I'm using the demo schema. Uh, you, you may, depending on the user account, you will have different um, schema that uh, showing here. Uh, so here, let's say we want uh, to see our Indeed. Okay, remember from previous lab that we collect a few records from Indeed. And let's select that one. And they're asking, do you want to import that one to Spicy for quick analytics? And I would say yes. And before that, because that will be faster. And actually, it's it's very small uh, data set. So uh, you can also check whether or not you want email owners when refresh uh, refresh fields. Uh, before we visualize, we can also preview our data. So let's preview our data. Uh, so now you can see from Indeed, uh, so we have IDs, which is integer. Uh, we have job title, so that is an, uh, data analytics. We have company, that is string. Uh, we have job location. So job location, so uh, at, you can see the default is string, but here I can choose that one to uh, city. Okay, so I can choose that one to city because most of the job are based on the cities. And the salary, well, the salary should be uh, integers. However, um, the, the format is not 
uniform, so they are used in different formats. So let's just leave that as is. So if you want to extract those numbers, so you, you need to do some ETL, so data extraction and transfor transformation and also load. And also here, those are the um, job descriptions. Okay, so it looks like pretty nice. And let's see, visualize. Okay, uh, so first, so now you can see it is autograph. So if we just click the job title, and, uh, and okay, so now it is importing the rows into SPIC, SPICY first. So let's just wait the importing to be finished. Uh, well, I don't know why it's keep importing. So um, because we only have a few records, so we we don't necessarily need the spicy. So let's let's cancel that one. So let's go to data editor. And let's say we want the direct query. So because we don't have a lot of data, so let's try direct query this time. Because you see there are only uh, 64 kilobyte data. So that's that's really small amount of data. Uh, so if you have huge amount of data and uh, and you import to spicy, so that will be faster. So here, let's say just want to use direct query. So direct query means that uh, it, the quick site will send out queries to uh, relational database and also retain the result and visualize the result. Uh, so here you can see not autograph. So if I just click job title, OK, and you can see they will detect, OK, so this is a string format. And you can they create a very nice um, uh, bar chart for you, and you can see that the the number one is uh, security policy analyst in in the data that I created. Okay, and you can also um, check the other create the other visualization. For example, here I add another visual, and this time I just click the job location. Okay. Um, job location, and now let's try if I can create a map. Great, so now you can see, because I convert that one to job locations, so now you can see I have multiple job, so now I can visualize those on the map, so I have one in Virginia, okay, two in Virginia, and also several, one in Washington, D.C., Okay, one in North Fork, Virginia. And also there's also one job. Uh, okay, and also there are several jobs that does not have any um, location information. Okay, you can see it's, it's pretty cool. And you can also add the other measures like color, etc. So for example, if I add the job title to the colors, Uh, now you can see that um, in Washington, you can see that what are those job titles. OK, uh, so that's a very simple quick demo that uh, you can see. Uh, we can create maps, and also we can visualize those different categories, uh, different things. We can also change the, the, uh, the type of those visualizations. But in most cases, uh, the default graph that QuickSight generated is is pretty good. And next, you can share your dashboard. So once you're done with your visualization, you can uh, publish your dashboard. So for this one, you can call it Indeed. And you can enable the other options. OK. And you can. And also, you can see, do you want to share this one with others? If yes, you can check that one. If no, that's fine. So you don't need to share this one with others. OK, so that is your dashboard. OK, if you share it with others, so others that who have those QuickSight account, they will be able to, to see your visualizations. OK, uh, so now you can see you have we have one data set that is indeed and we have one analytics so that is a, 
on the process that we created those visualizations and also we have one final output that is a dashboard okay uh, so let's try another one so let's say um Let's say that we want to analyze our student information and also professor information. So let's say we create a new data set. Again, we are using the post Jerry circle. Uh, still, we are called I340. And we are going to follow the, um, the same process that we did. validate great but this case uh, I'm going to select the cost table the enroll list the cost table okay looks like we can only select one and let's select that one and let's still try to uh, direct queries and let's edit and also preview okay uh, so here we have the cost table you can see uh, right now I have three courses uh, so on this demo I want to show you that how we can join multiple tables so if you remember that uh, in SQL we have used that we had to write that super complicated join sentences however um, by using BI tools uh, we can join those tables pretty easy so let's say here we have course table and we can join the professor table And now you can see here, uh, you have defined the relationship between professor and also course. So let's say we see, okay, we define the professor and the course based on the professor email. Okay, so remember that P email is primary key on professor table and also foreign key on the course table. And you can specify do you want inner join, left join, right join, and also for join. So let's use inner join and let's hit apply okay and now we can success, successfully join two tables together so you can see that in my case the new professor is teaching all three courses okay uh, so that's pretty cool and we can also continue drawing those tables so for example we can join the enroll list which is that enroll list will be joined based on the cost number okay so we have cost number cost name etc and we can also continue join so let's say we now also want the student okay and here we see that student should can only be joined together with this in list. so we drag it here to the enroll list and we added the join so the join will be student email equals student email and we hit apply okay uh, so now you can see that we have joined three four tables together so uh, it's only four tables so relational database is still able to handle that however if you have a lot of huge data set so for example, if you have millions of records in each table, and if you, or if you want to join uh, 20 or 30 tables together, in that case, you should use a data warehouse instead of using a relational table, instead of using a relational database. Okay, and now let's say that we have joined all tables together, so we can also uncheck those uh, duplicated um, columns so for example let's uncheck the emails and our student emails um, professor emails so let's say we all have cost table cost name student name and our professor so now we have a super um, a long table a white table that has a that joined all the information together and now let's visual, save and visualize. Okay, uh, so for example, if you put the professor name, so there's only one professor. And if you select professor name and also the course name together, 
OK. And you can see that uh, it's not make a lot of sense. However, so uh, if we drag the cost name to the values. OK, so now you can see that how many courses are taken by this professor. OK. And here you can use the count distinct. So you can see this professor is teaching two unique courses. OK. And let's see, we add another ratio. So let's see here we put the course. OK, so now we have two courses. And let's put the student as values. OK. And now we can see for each single course and how many students get enrolled. And actually, as we count the distinct, OK, so how many students are enrolled in each class? And here, that means how many courses are teaching by each professor. And we can also add another uh, visual where, let's say, we put student name first. OK, so we have those student name. And for the values, let's put, let's see that how many courses they are taken. OK, and we can also use distinct. So we can say S1 is taking two courses, S2 is taking two courses, and also S3 is taking two courses, and S1 is taking one course. And we can put major as their colors. And now you can say they are all I majors, so that's just one color. OK, so that another way that you can see that um, instead of you running those very complicated SQL queries and you can do that one very easily um, by using the BI tools. And of course, you can also share this dashboard. And you can call it uh, uh, course student professor. OK, and you can choose whether or not you want to share it with others, either type emails, etc. OK, so now we have two analytics and we have two data set and we have two dashboards. So this is a very quick review of QuickSight so that uh, what does autograph means and also they can also create nice maps automatically. Uh, if you choose the right data type and also you can join multiple tables together so very easy so um, and also you can create visualizations that you want